Well, this morning, continuing our series on the liturgy, we want to begin simply by considering the chair that the priest sits in. The chair is the symbol of authority. You know, in ancient times, the only people who got to sit down were the really important people. And uh, so, building on that, that's where the chair as a symbol of authority comes from. You know, our Lord is always depicted in heaven as seated at the right hand of the Father, and that's why. And so, the chair in any church really represents the chair in the cathedral, the cathedra of the bishop, which is where the cathedral takes its name, that symbol of the bishop's authority. Because the priest, especially the pastor in any parish, makes present the bishop. He is the true uh, leader of each church in the diocese, but he can't obviously be there, so the priests take his place, as it were, and share in his authority. So that is what the chair means for us, a symbol of our authority and of our connection to the bishop. Now, what we want to follow up on today is the, um, the next part of the liturgy. Having done the sign of the cross last time, we're now looking at the introductory dialogue between the priests and the people. And we spoke last time about how uh, the dialogue, the sign of the cross and the amen is already a kind of a dialogue, and then how that dialogue between the priests and the people really makes present the dialogue between God and man, but especially the dialogue between Jesus Christ, the head, and the church, his mystical body. That reality of the church is made present, and in a special way, this is clear in the greeting that the priest greets the people with. In fact, the general instruction of the Roman Missal uh, says, by this greeting, the people's response, or and the people's response, the mystery of the church gathered together is made manifest. And so, the greetings, they are in fact all scriptural quotations. The first one is, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That is a direct quotation from 2 Corinthians 13.13. Uh, 13. And it's really, uh, uh, this is where we begin to look at some of the changes from the new translation. This is the first place. Uh, the only real change here is that the word in the current translation is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now being changed to the communion of the Holy Spirit. The words can mean the same thing, but fellowship tends to have a little bit more of a human dimension to it. We fellowship with each other, but with God we have communion. And so the word communion, while not excluding the idea of communion with our neighbors, uh, focuses us more on our communion with God. And of course it resonates with holy communion, which is what we are all here for. Now the second greeting, the second option the priest can greet the people with, is grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a quote from Romans 1.7. And, uh, you know, all of these readings are the readings that St. Paul is using. So his wish of Christ's grace and peace and the triune God's peace to the church. Then uh, the most common, you know, reading that we always use is the Lord be with you. And you may not know this, but this is actually also a scriptural quotation. It is from the book of Ruth. Chapter uh, 2, verse 4, Ruth. And it's said by Boaz, who is, I think, the great grandfather of King David. And he says it, he greets the people who are harvesting his wheat field. And that's not an insignificant detail because this is the greeting for those who are gathering their daily bread, as it were. And that is why we come to Mass, to receive the daily bread of the spiritual life. You know, as we pray in the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. So those are the three options that the priest can greet the people with. But there is a fourth, which is reserved to the bishop, and it is simply, peace be with you, which is a direct quote of the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 15, the words of our Lord to the apostles when he is risen and appears to them for the first time. And only the bishop, because he stands in the fullness of 
holy orders is most perfectly conformed to our Lord Jesus Christ, he alone uh, takes up, as it were, the words of the gospel, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ himself to greet the people. And so in a special way, the reality of Christ the head and the body of the church is made present when the bishop is with the people. Now, in response to all of these uh, greetings, the people then respond in the new translation, and with your spirit. Now, of course, this is kind of a strange change. Uh, we're, it's not the way we normally talk. So why are we doing this? Well, first of all, the, this also has a scriptural origin. This is the language of sacred scripture. So, for example, St. Paul says this to the people he writes to. In Galatians 6.18, he says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. To Timothy 4.22, he says to Timothy, The Lord be with your spirit. So this is the way that Scripture speaks, and this is, that's one of the reasons why we want it to be part of the liturgy. But also, this reference to the spirit is not a reference to the priest's you know, human soul. It is rather a reference to his ordination, the fact that he stands by the power of the Holy Spirit in the person of Jesus Christ. And so it is really a, a reference to the Holy Spirit. One of the early uh, church writers, Narsai of Nisidus, try saying that ten times fast, says uh, this about this. He says, the name Spirit refers not to the soul of the priest, but to the spirit he has received through the laying on of hands. So very much a reference to the Holy Spirit, this reality of Christ the head and the church the body being made present through this dialogue. And another way we see this is one of the instructions uh, for how we are to give the sign of peace. Now this is a different part of the Mass, of course, and in fact we don't actually even do it this way. I'm not quite sure how we would, but according to the germ, the general instruction of the Roman Missal, it says that when the congregation gives each other the sign of peace, one person, it suggests, uh, it just, this is only a suggestion, it says one person might say to the other, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And the other person would say in reply, Amen. Now we don't do that because I don't know how you would figure out which person says which part. But the significance there is the instruction does not tell us to speak to each other and say to each other, and with your spirit, but only Amen. Because it is only when the congregation responds to the priest, responds to Jesus Christ, that reality of the church made present, that they use the language of the spirit. So, as a final uh, point, you know, by doing this, by making our English translation closer to the Latin, not only does it bring out all of these realities, but it unifies unifies the English liturgy with pretty much all of the other vernacular liturgies in the world, with the exception of the Portuguese, who uh, also were doing what we do, and also with you. All the other languages in the world say, and with your spirit, you know, in the Spanish, e come to his spirit. That's what they say in their mass. So this brings, shows the reality, the universality, of the church by making the words of our liturgy the same as the words of all the other vernacular liturgies in the world. And so, by meditating upon this introductory dialogue between the priest and the people, what we should be reminded of is the reality of Jesus Christ as Emmanuel, as Jesus Christ as God with us. Our Lord's words to us, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them present. And so the reality of head and body, Christ and the church, is truly made present in these opening uh, words of the Mass. So let us prepare ourselves to receive our head in the Holy Eucharist and to truly be faithful members of his body.